46. Donald Trump on Monday signed a revised executive order to reinstate a ban on immigration from certain Muslim-majority countries and suspend the U.S. refugee program. The new ban, which revokes a previous order issued on 27 January that prompted instant chaos and was eventually blocked by federal judges, marked a significant retreat for Trump and his administration's vigorous defense of the original travel ban as being within the president's legal authority. But activists said they were planning to challenge the new ban. Day 47 the Republican plan to replace the Affordable Care Act hit a wall of fierce conservative opposition on Tuesday, less than a day after it was introduced. The American Health Care Act is already being denounced by many influential conservative groups and is meeting widespread skepticism among Republicans on Capitol Hill. Major right-wing advocacy organizations rushed to denounce the legislation. The Club for Growth president, David McIntosh, said the group, which keeps scorecards of how Republicans vote on certain key issues, would downgrade Republicans who support the House bill, if this warrant over substitute for government-run health care remains unchanged, the Club for Growth will key vote against it. FreedomWorks dubbed it Obamacare Light, using another name for the Affordable Care Act. Day 48 Donald Trump's newly revised travel ban is set to face its first legal challenge after a federal judge in Hawaii allowed the state's attorney general to submit an amended lawsuit previously lodged against the president's first, failed ban. Trump's new executive order, signed on Monday, bars new visas for people from six Muslim-majority countries and replaces an initial order issued on 27 January which was chaotically rolled out and subsequently halted by a federal court following a barrage of legal challenges from states and advocate groups across the country. The new order sought to alleviate some of these complaints with an amended version of the order. But the state of Hawaii argues in a proposed amended complaint that the new order remains incompatible with freedom of religion protections in both the state and federal constitutions, would harm the state's economy and educational institutions and would prevent Hawaiians with family members in the six targeted countries from uniting. Day 49 Scott Bruin, Donald Trump's head of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, has dismissed a basic scientific understanding of climate change by denying that carbon dioxide emissions are a primary cause of global warming. Pruitt said on Thursday that he did not believe that the release of CO2, a heat-trapping gas, was pushing global temperatures upwards. This stance puts Pruitt at odds with his own agency, which states on its website that carbon dioxide is the primary greenhouse gas that is contributing to recent climate change. This finding is backed by NASA, which calls CO2 the most important long-lived forcing of climate change. Scientists have understood for more than a century that CO2 traps heat. Atmospheric concentrations of the gas have increased by more than a third since the Industrial Revolution driven by the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation. Day 50 Is there method in the madness? No one doubts that Donald Trump's first 50 days as U.S. President have busted norms, paradigms and taboos every bit as surely as his insurgent election campaign. On day 44, for example, he used Twitter to accuse his presidential predecessor, Barack Obama, of criminal wiretapping, then in the next moment mocked his reality TV successor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, over poor ratings. But Trump has also been both praised and criticized for doing more than many politicians to keep his election promises. There have been fleeting moments when a blurry picture of policy sharpens into focus. From the botched travel bans to the wrangling over healthcare reform, there are signs of how difficult it will be to translate policy into coherent action. There is no ideology around the policies we see so far, said Michael Steele, former chairman of the Republican National Committee. There are particular impressions on issues. A lot of it is campaign-related rhetoric. Day 51 Prosecutor Preet Bharara was fired from his post as the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York after refusing to comply with an order Friday, abruptly sent by Attorney General Jeff Sessions, that he and 46 of his peers should resign. Although appointed by Barack Obama in 2009, 
Burra made his name in the U.S.'s preeminent prosecutor's office with a series of corruption investigations of Democrats and Republicans alike, as well as high-profile cases on insider trading, terrorism, espionage and gangs. Unlike Sally Yates, the acting attorney general fired by Trump because she refused to defend one of his executive orders in court, Berra's surprise dismissal followed an apparent truce between the president and the prosecutor. Last year, Berra met with Trump and Sessions as they transitioned into office, and said he was asked to stay on in service in New York. But on day 51 of the Trump administration he was fired, prompting Berra to tweet, I did not resign. Moments ago I was fired. Being the U.S. attorney in SDNY will forever be the greatest honor of my professional life. Neither the White House nor the Justice have explained the abrupt decision to dismiss dozens of U.S. attorneys, although new presidents normally replace most of their predecessors' picks, they sometimes do so in stages. New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, a Democrat said the firing and dismissal caused chaos in the federal government and led to questions about whether the Justice Department's vital and non-partisan work will continue. Day 52 The president stayed inside the executive residence on his 51st day in office, while emissaries of his White House and the leaders of the Republican Party bickered over clashing visions of what health care in America should look like. Trump's Secretary of Health, Tom Price made a surprising promise that nobody will be worse off financially under the new plan. House Speaker Paul Ryan did not deny that people could lose their insurance, but said that would be a choice left to Americans. But we're not going to make an American do what they don't want to do, he said. You get it, if you want it. That's freedom. Trump's budget director, Meek Mulvaney, said he wasn't sure that a non-partisan research group charged with evaluating the plan was fit to evaluate it. Opposing the plan were fellow Republicans, Senator Tom Cotton said the bill was in part too severe, Ohio Governor John Kasich said it cut too many people out of Medicaid, and Congressman Mark Meadows said the plan was not extreme enough. Facing off against these divisions were Democrats, itching to fight, and American voters, standing in limbo as their representatives decide the terms of how much it costs to stay healthy. Day 53 As many as 24 million Americans risk losing health coverage over the next decade under the Republican plan to replace the Affordable Care Act, popularly known as Obamacare, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office said on Monday. The report predicts a dramatic loss of health care coverage over the next decade if Congress enacts the Republican health care proposal, which has faced criticism from across the political spectrum and from nearly every sector of the health care industry. An estimated 52 million people would be uninsured in 2026, compared with the 28 million who would lack insurance that year under the current law, according to the report. President Donald Trump, who supports the Republican plan, has promised that his plan would provide insurance for everybody. Day 54 The White House was forced to defend its health care plan on multiple fronts on Tuesday after a damning report found it would deprive millions of people of insurance, deepening divisions in the Republican Party. A nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office CBO, study released on Monday predicted that by 2026, the number of people without insurance would increase by 24 million if House Republicans' legislation to replace the 2010 Affordable Care Act ACA, dash also known as Obamacare, is adopted. But during an hour-long briefing dominated by the issue, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer challenged the CBO's figures, contended that two further phases of reform should be taken into account and continued his retrospective battle with Barack Obama's administration. Day 55 A federal judge in Hawaii blocked Donald Trump's revised travel ban just hours before it was due to go into effect, marking another stinging blow to the administration. Judge Derek Watson, a district judge in Honolulu, issued a nationwide temporary restraining order against the travel ban, which targets visa applicants from six Muslim-majority countries and temporarily suspends the U.S. refugee resettlement program. 
The ruling comes a month after Trump's first order was blocked by a court in Washington state, prompting the administration to issue a narrower order last week that attempted to navigate some of the complaints made in the first round of legal battles. Day 56 the Republican and Democratic leaders of the Senate Intelligence Committee have rubbished Donald Trump's incendiary claim that Barack Obama placed Trump Tower under surveillance. Based on the information available to us, we see no indications that Trump Tower was the subject of surveillance by any element of the United States government either before or after Election Day 2016. The Republican Richard Burr of North Carolina and the Democrat Mark Warner of Virginia said in a joint statement on Thursday. On Thursday, the White House press secretary, Sean Spicer, challenged the conclusion of the intelligence committees in a combative press conference, in which he insisted there was information of which Congress was not yet aware. Day 57 Donald Trump refused to back down on Friday in the face of British outrage at White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer's decision to repeat an unsubstantiated claim that British intelligence had spied on the president. Asked about the claim during a joint press conference with Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, Trump said Spicer had only been quoting a talented lawyer who had been speaking on Fox News. We said nothing, argued Trump. All we did was quote a certain very talented legal mind who was the one responsible for saying that on television. Day 58 In Florida for another weekend, Trump may or may not have been playing golf, aides wouldn't say if he played around at his course but he was pictured with guests wearing a golf glove. What the president did do was tweet, of course, this time criticizing the fake news for misreporting his awkward meeting with Angela Merkel and then accusing Germany of owing vast sums of money to NATO. The US, Trump wrote, must be paid more for the powerful, and very expensive, defense it provides to Germany. One of President Obama's representatives to NATO was among those to point out that the president did not seem to know how NATO works. Elsewhere. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson's controversial trip to Asia continued, with China rejecting Trump's criticism regarding its handling of North Korea and Tillerson giving an interview to the only journalist on his plane, a representative of a conservative outlet. Day 59 In Florida, Trump stayed quiet, emerging from his golf club only to tell reporters on Air Force One, before the flight back to Washington, that North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un was acting very, very badly. He did not address German defense minister's rejection of his claims about NATO and debt sold. Elsewhere, backlash to his claims that Barack Obama wiretapped Trump Tower continued two weeks after the presidential tweets in question. Writing for The Guardian, Sir Peter Westmacott, UK ambassador to the US from 2012 to 2016, said the administration's repetition of claims by a Fox News commentator that Obama asked for British help in his supposed surveillance was absurd, unthinkable and nonsensical, not to say dangerous. Elsewhere, Republicans deployed to the talk shows to talk up the Obamacare replacement, due for a vote in the House this week and facing potential GOP defections. Speaker Paul Ryan admitted that the bill needed changes, to help the vulnerable more. Day 60 FBI Director James Comey has said there was no basis for Donald Trump's claims to have been wiretapped by Barack Obama, but confirmed for the first time that the agency is investigating possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Moscow to influence the outcome of the presidential election. Comey had previously refused to comment on the existence of any such investigation but addressing the House Intelligence Committee. Comey reversed course and said he had been authorized to depart from that policy and give some basic details. Details. Day 61. After months of attending meetings of world leaders and visiting factories with her father, the role of first daughter Ivanka Trump is officially expanding, creating new ethical issues for an administration that has been heavily criticized over its potential conflicts of interest. She will not have a specific title. But Trump will have an office in the West Wing, a government-issued phone and computer and security clearance to access classified information, and she will advise her father. Day 62 
Muslim special agents and intelligence analysts at the FBI are reporting a climate of fear inside the agency coinciding with the political ascendance of Donald Trump, The Guardian has learned. FBI officials from Muslim-majority countries, a minority in a predominantly white bureau, say they are subject to an organizational culture of suspicion and hostility that leadership has done little to reform. At least one decorated intelligence analyst has been fired this year after a long ordeal which began with a routine foreign visit to see his family. Day 63 The Republicans on Thursday abandoned a vote on their plans to repeal the Affordable Care Act, as Donald Trump and House Speaker Paul Ryan faced rebellion across the House Republican Caucus. According to a leadership aide, the scheduled Thursday House vote on the bill was delayed at least for one day as Republicans scrambled to find legislation that can achieve a majority within the chamber. Trump, however, seemed initially oblivious as he met with a delegation of truckers at the White House, jumping into the cab of an 18-wheeler to pose for photographs, and telling them the vote was pressing ahead that night. Day 64 Donald Trump suffered a major legislative reversal on Friday as Republicans were forced to pull their repeal of the Affordable Care Act from the House floor. After weeks of contentious negotiations over the American Health Care Act AHCA, Republicans were forced to admit defeat as they could not gain sufficient support from their own side for the plan to overhaul U.S. health insurance. As it became clear that Republican resistance to the bill was hardening, House Speaker Paul Ryan went to the White House to tell Trump in person that he did not have the votes to pass the bill. Day 65 The day after the calamitous collapse of the Republican health care reform, Trump visited one of his golf clubs. This time it was Trump National in Potomac Falls, Virginia, while wife Melania and son Barron enjoyed the many amenities and pleasant climate of the president's Florida Volto. It was a quiet day news-wise, but the president's thumbs nonetheless twitched, first to tell followers Obamacare will explode and we will all get together and piece together a great health care plan for the people. Do not worry. And then to say they should all watch at Judge Janine on at Fox News tonight at 9 p.m., the time hallowed and weighty demands of government thus met, Trump and his critics and supporters alike, returned to pondering his response to health care defeat. Day 66 On a second day at Trump National in Virginia, Trump confined himself to one tweet. He was using his blunder bus, though, writing, Democrats are smiling in D.C. that the Freedom Caucus, with the help of Club for Growth and Heritage, have saved Planned Parenthood and OCK. There was no mention of Speaker Paul Ryan, who some thought to have been the target of the president's cryptic Fox-focused missive on Saturday. The show Trump wanted people to watch, Judge Janine, opened with a call for Ryan to quit. On the Sunday shows, surrogates suggested tax reform could be next while former Freedom Caucus member turned budget czar Mick Mulvaney lamented the actions of his buddies on the hard Republican right. There were also attempts to blame the Democrats for the failure of Ryan's health care bill, for not helping gut Barack Obama's signal achievement. Chuck Schumer and Bernie Sanders were, of course, having none of it. Over in Trump Russia FBI House Intelligence Committee bill, meanwhile, Roger Stone protested his innocence and Adam Schiff protested his impotence in the face of Devin Nooney's sad behavior. It was all very, very Trump. Day 67. Jared Gushner, Donald Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor, found himself back in the spotlight for better and for worse. As the U.S. president appointed him to a new White House role, it was revealed that Gushner would testify before a Senate committee investigating Russian interference in last year's election. Day 68 Donald Trump launched an all-out assault on Barack Obama's climate change legacy with the sweeping executive order that undermines America's commitment to the Paris Agreement. Watched by culminers at a ceremony at the Environmental Protection Agency in Washington, the president signed an order to trigger a review of the Clean Power Plan, Obama's flagship policy to curb carbon emissions, and rescind a moratorium on the sale of coal mining leases on federal lands. Day 69 The leaders of the Senate Intelligence Committee pledged that their investigation of Russian interference in last year's presidential election will be independent and bipartisan 
as a bitter dispute continues to cloud a similar inquiry in the House of Representatives.